Strap in, folks. This is going to be a fun one for you to watch and for me to make. I'm going to be honest because we're taking a trip down memory lane to some of the most nostalgic, fun, crazy, goofy things back from the past of Diablo 2. So I'm not going to say all of these things are good. We're obviously looking back with rose-colored glasses here at the stuff from the past. Maybe nowadays things are actually better in some ways compared to the things I'm going to bring up now. But looking back nostalgically, it all sounds super great and super amazing. Now the first thing I'm going to nostalgically kind of look back and think on is originally how you would get rushed and how you would get all the way up to 99. Now, now I understand that the 99 race on ladder takes forever. You got to kind of work together crazy. We all know how Teo did it for the first ladder of Diablo 2 Resurrected back in the day. Getting a level 99 character was not that difficult. All you had to do was hop into a cow game no matter what level you were, and you would get a butt ton of experience. Now, it's kind of crazy. You could literally get to hell and just be like level one, two, three, or something like that. You didn't have to have certain level requirements. You could just get past the ancients no matter what you were if somebody was rushing you. So, like I just said, you could literally get to hell. You'd be level two or three just on accident because you accidentally got some experience from somewhere. You'd hop into a hell cow game and literally the very first game you would jump into, you would just sit next to the portal and you'd be like level 25 by the end of that first game. You'd hop into another cow game. By the end of that game, you'd be level 35. Hop into another one, you'd be level 42. And you could literally level up to like level 85 or 90 within a half hour maybe. So it was pretty crazy. It would take you a little bit of time to get rushed through. But like I said, you don't need to get any of those levels. So you could get rushed through mega quick by any sorceress they would teleport you through. Now, a lot of people I'm sure who've played through the game dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds and hundreds or thousands of times are probably reminiscing and pretty nostalgic on wishing that they could get their characters through the game and leveled up that fast to get to the end game and get farming. Now in Diablo 2 Resurrected, you hear a lot of people say that they want the uniques better and they wish that the overpowered rune words weren't so much better than uniques. Well, thinking back nostalgically, back in the day, this would have been your heaven. Now, when the game originally came out, there weren't even runes. Then they added some rune words, not as crazy powerful as Enigma and Grief and stuff like that. And then eventually they added that stuff in. But back in the day, the absolute best items you could get were things like the Grandfather and the Wind Force. Partially because, also back in the day, the Whirlwind Barbarian and that Boazon were some of the most powerful characters in the entire game. Now, because there weren't all these super powerful rune words, all the uniques were really the go-to items. Even some lower level stuff that maybe people might use here and there now, but are completely slapped away by the new rune words, were really good. A good example of that is almost all the casters and a lot of different, like Javazan, things like that, they used the lidless wall because there wasn't that spirit rune word back in the day. So I'm not saying it's really better or worse, but it was kind of funny. One that I can remember from first hand is when you'd see the Amazons running around with their bows, they all looked essentially identical. They had the vamp gaze on the top, they had the shaft step on the armor, they had the wind force as the bow, and if you couldn't afford the wind force, you used that Berzia Kandu Tantan, or however that one's pronounced. Now while we're on the topic of things that they didn't used to have in the game, how about mana potions? They did have them, but you had to find them off of monsters. You could not go to the vendor and buy them, they did not have any for sale. Nowadays, when you're playing like Endgame, that's really not a big deal because you kind of find them all over the place. And when you do need to buy them, you don't even really think about it or your gear and stuff and your character is so good, you don't really need to worry about it. But back in the day, the characters aren't as good. It seemed like potions really did not drop as often as they do now and you couldn't buy them. And all in all, we just didn't have, like I said, enough knowledge on the game to really have characters as good to not need mana. You gotta remember, there weren't all the rune words, like you weren't having insight way back in the day and stuff like that. So you were constantly ripping through mana. That is another one that I do not miss. Now, even though you could get rushed through the game and level up to 99 that quick, you wanted to make sure you never made a mistake when putting in your stat points or your skills. Because back in the day, there was absolutely no respects. Now, this is one of those negative nostalgia things. Who doesn't remember thinking, Oh man, I completely messed this character up. Now I'm gonna have to go ahead and start all over. Now, that was always a disappointing day, especially with it's one of your first characters. You don't know necessarily what skills are good and bad. We didn't have all the information that we do nowadays. 
And plus, we were all just kids at the time. So I can remember going through with a barbarian back in the day or maybe a necromancer, putting points here, putting points there, kind of trying to feel out what skills are working, what I really wanted to do. And I ended up with skill points scattered all amongst the skill trees. I literally couldn't get out of Nightmare with that character. This is kind of even before I knew what rushing really was. I was just playing through the game by myself, kind of, and with some other people that I found online randomly here and there. So man, that was a good addition to the game, being able to respec your character. Now we're going to jump into what's going to be the largest section of this video, and it's kind of the most nostalgic for a ton of people, and that is the items that used to exist or used to drop, and now they no longer do. But you can remember having so much fun with these crazy items. The first one we'll talk about that, let's see if any of y'all remember these, white rings and gloves. If you don't remember these, the rings had 100% faster walk run, 100% increased attack speed, it had added damage, 20 life leech, and it had 95 to fire, lightning, and cold absorb. It is just absolutely crazy. Obviously a hacked item that they got into the game online and then they duped it to crazy. But, oh my gosh, those stats are absolutely bananas. And then the white gloves were incredibly similar. These having the 100% increased attack speed, having 100% faster hit recovery, having that added damage, only having a little minuscule 15% life leech on them. But these differing, not having that absorb, having 90 to dexterity, 90 to vitality, and 100 to all resistances. Like a lot of the items that are on this crazy nostalgic list, these are obviously hacked, they no longer exist, but it was crazy and kind of fun just slaughtering the game down with these crazy items back in the day. This next one here, you would definitely plug on your sorceress. It looks like it could be a fused item, but I believe actually this was some kind of hack that ended up getting duped up, and that is the oxy rings. This one isn't as crazy overpowered as the white rings and white gloves. Still crazy overpowered having all these stats on the ring. It definitely would slap down any other type of item that you would ever put in the ring slot for the sorceress, but it's not as crazy overpowered as like the white rings and white gloves. So yeah, it's literally just all the stats from the Oculus pasted right onto a stone of Jordan. It was definitely cool having these back in the day. But it is, like I said, way overpowered anything else you'd plug into a sorceress there. Once again, here we'll look at another one that appears to be a type of fused item. This one may be a little more possible than the other one, while they're both possible to happen. It's so uncommon to happen that they're probably in some way are just some glitched or hacked item that someone didn't actually find. But here we got the wizard spike gloves. Now it's obviously mage fist that got overridden by the Wiz Spike, so it's got the faster cast rate, uh, increased maximum mana, mana based on level, but huge. Could you imagine 75 all res on gloves? So while not as overpowered as the completely hacked white rings and white gloves once again, it still is way more powerful than any caster glove that you'd have in that slot. So for any caster, you would have definitely wanted these on them. It would definitely make it way easier to reach those mega high breakpoints on the Sorceress if you could use gloves like these. Not to mention, you never have to worry about capping your res when you have 75 to all of it just on your gloves. Now, this is probably the most overpowered item, in my opinion, that I'd ever seen on Diablo 2, and that is Hex Charms. Now, these had 90 to Strength, 90 to Dex, 90 to Vitality. Now, please, someone down in the comments, correct me if I'm wrong, but I swear I can't find any instance of it, and I can't find anyone else who remembers it, but I know that I've seen mana versions of these hex charms too that the vitality was just replaced with mana and the reason i remember it somebody tried to scam me with them the mana ones were obviously way less valuable than the vitality ones were because there wasn't as much use for the mana obviously if you're dueling you want more life who really cares that much about mana right but i can remember trading something i can't really remember what i was going to trade it for five hex charms they came in and tried giving me the mana version which is worth like a third of what the vitality ones were so yeah please someone tell me i'm not crazy i'm not making this up in my head and you remember those mana hex charms as well but yeah back in the day it was wild when you'd have like a full inventory of this stuff nothing could ever touch you nobody who was playing legit in any way if you were pvp and could ever touch you it literally made the game way too easy when you had like 3500 vitality so the last one we're going to talk about is its weapons and if armors now this was kind of a glitch that would happen back in the day when you would make rune words. You could then remove the runes 
the rune word stuff would still be added to the item and then you could plug other jewels and runes in on top of it. There was a lot of different variations of this from bows to swords to shields to armors. So there was all different types of ith weapons and ith armors. And one I remember back in the day, I don't know if Editor Sweet Phil's gonna be able to find a picture or example of it, but there was the Quark Bow, the, 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 the Great Quark, I believe his name was or whatever. I think that was the guy probably, obviously he personalized them and then duped them up in order to trade them online. But that was one that I can remember thinking back nostalgically, it was the one that everybody tried to get. So let me know some of your favorite nostalgic memories down in the comments, whether they're good or bad. Hit that like button and subscribe up if you're new to the channel before you go. Peace out and don't forget, keep slaying. <laughs>